So today we're going to talk about uh, velocity and tangent problems. Uh, I want you to be able to find tangents, find tangent lines, find secant lines. Um, we're going to talk about how velocity shows up as well. So first off, let's talk about what a tangent line is. A tangent line is a line through a point on a curve that touches the curve just once relative to the location of the point and follows the direction of the curve at that point. A tangent line is a line through a point on a curve that touches the curve just once relative to the location of the point and follows the direction of the curve at that point. You will see in this picture here, these two lines then are tangent to the curve. They hit the curve at one point and then follow the curve's direction at that point. Now you'll notice that our um, red curve here, that tangent line could hit the curve in another spot, but we are talking about relative to that location at that location, we only hit it once. Let me, let me remind you of some other terms related to circles and how they show up visually. So let's look at this picture right here. You remember probably from geometry class that a radius is a um, line segment that connects the center of the circle to an outer edge. Okay. It is half the length of the diameter. So you know that the diameter is two times the radius in length. <coughs> A chord is any line segment that touches the edges of the circle and is connected inside the circle. It is a line segment that connects two points on your circle. A, rate, uh, a diameter is considered a chord. It is just the longest chord that will ever occur within your circle. Now, I want to talk about the difference between a secant line and a tangent line. So look over on our circle again. The secant line is just any line that <coughs> connects two points on our circle. It's not the line segment. It is the total line. Okay? A tangent line only hits it once. And it is always, always, always perpendicular to the diameter in which it's touching. The tangent line of a circle is always perpendicular to the diameter at which it touches the circle. Always perpendicular there. 90 degrees. That is a property that you would have learned in a geometry class. So let's look at the difference. The tangent line only hits uh, the point on the curve once and then follows the direction of the curve. A secant line is a line between two, two points on a function. So it's just the connection of two points along that particular uh, function or that particular equation. The secant line is going to help us find the tangent line, but uh, we may have to estimate for a while until we know a way to find the tangent's uh, information exactly. And that's kind of where we're heading. Eventually, we'll be able to find the tangents exactly. Um, we're going to start out kind of looking at the graph and using kind of an estimate to find our tangent line.
last year, we discussed when a function is increasing and the decreasing. Well, tangent lines have a lot to do with that. Let's take a look at how this tangent line moves along the function. So what's really cool is this is just a tangent line. It is we are creating a tangent line that is just moving as it moves across the function. What do you notice about all the places where the tangent line is green? It's an increasing function at that point. So every place that you see that the tangent line turns green, that means that from left to right, the function is going uphill. What about when it turns red? Downhill. It's going downhill. So every place that you see uh, the, the function turn red, it is decreasing. It is um, having, uh, it is falling from left to right. And what about the places where it turns black? Do you remember last year what those places were called? Max and min. Those were our relative maxes and mids. So where we see that the, that the tangent line turns black, that's our maxes or mids. Where our, our uh, tangent line turns green, it's increasing. Where our tangent line turns red, it's decreasing. So the tangent lines tell us a lot. What are the slopes of all the green lines? Positive, negative, or zero? Yeah, the positive, the green lines all have positive slopes. The red lines all have negative slopes. And the black lines all have zero slopes. So there's a direct connection in how a function increases or decreases based upon the slope of the tangent. So we're going to link those two as we go through. So that's just a really nice visual to let you kind of see how a tangent line affects where, it, where it's located is affected by the fact whether the function is increasing or decreasing and how steeply it's increasing or decreasing. So let's talk about how we find these things. Now, the one that you are most familiar with is finding just um, the slope of a normal secant line, but I want to talk about how we are going to find the slope of a tangent line. To find the slope of a tangent line, at some point a f of a, so it's just an x and a y, a is the x, f of a is your y. Um, we are looking as x and a get closer and closer and closer together until the gap is so minimal that we could not even recognize it. It just becomes f of x minus f of a over x minus a. What does that kind of look like that we have done recently? That looks like the difference quotient. And the difference quotient is good. This is where the difference quotient is going to start to appear itself. Um, this is the slope as we get closer and closer and closer until the point we are just right there. Okay? And that is considered the slope of the tangent. It is considered an instantaneous rate of change. The word that you want to get into your brain is that the tangent is an instantaneous rate of change. So it is denoting the change at that very instant. So that's why every single point along the line has its own unique tangent line and that's created by its increasing and decreasing movement. Okay. So when the function has a tangent? Yes, it is its own tangent. Kind of, yeah. It's its own unique variable. So how do we find the equation of the tangent line through that point? Well, we use the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1 is how you might have seen it written in the past. Same formula. It's just our point slope formula. Please make sure that you know that formula by heart. That's in your brain. You have to know your point slope formula. Because we're going to use it again and again and again for the rest of the year. You have to make sure you know that.
that bond had to be. So the slope of the tangent is an instantaneous rate of change. And it changes as we go across the function depending upon how the function is increasing or decreasing. And it will be flat if it is at a peak or a valley, a um, lower peak and a max. The one that you have been finding since you were in an Algebra 1 course is the slope of a secant line. And that basically is we have two points, x1 and x2, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay, so the one that you are familiar with is your normal secant line slope. And the secant line, the word that you have to remember there is an average rate of change. It's an average rate of change. So you have to memorize the fact that the slope is an instantaneous <coughs> rate of change and the secant is an average rate of change. They both rely on some of the formulas from the past, except one we are trying to get as close to x as we possibly can. The other can be between any two points along your curve. But please know these facts by heart. So let's look at an example. Our first example here says to find the slope in the equation of a tangent line of f of x equals x squared at the point 2, 4. So I have uh, taken a snapshot of what the graph looks like. Uh, it's a parabola, you know that. Um, I am looking at what's happening at the point 2, 4, which I've labeled here with a red dot. And I've drawn kind of a rough sketch of my tangent line. So um, let's take a look at what we can think about that particular tangent line. So we know that my a f of a is the point 2, 4. Okay, so that is my a and my f of a. Now, let's think about what we want to be. We need to be a point that is super, super close to our x value of 2 or our a value of 2. Let's call that super close point 2.001. That's pretty darn close. So as we get super, super close, if we plug that x value into our function, since that would be 2.001 squared, we're going to be at 4.004. Um, I'm just finding something that is super close. That is the definition of how we find the slope of the tangent. We are looking for an x value that is approaching a, but hasn't landed on a yet. Okay, so we're looking at two points along our function that are super close together. So we're looking at 2.001, right next to it. Okay. So how do you find the slope? Well, the slope of the tangent is just um, f of x minus f of a over x minus a, okay? where x and a are super close together. So if we do that, that's 4.004001 minus 4 over 2.001 minus 2, which is really super close. Really super close to 
it appears as if our handling has a slope of three. Now let's go back to our uh, blue line that I that I drew as an estimate. Think about if we were to count. We would go from this point, let's go from that point right here. Wouldn't we go up four and over one? See, my scale's a little weird, but we would go up four and over one, which we know is slope. So it appears like my graph and my mathematical information are lining up. So how do we find the equation? Because we want the equation of the tangent line. Well, the equation of the tangent line is just y minus um, our original point, f of x, equals our slope times uh, x minus a. Okay? So we're going to put our a value and we're going to put our f of a value that our slope we found into that equation. So it's going to be y minus my value of 4 equals my slope of 4 times x minus 2. And so if you put that, if you feel more comfortable uh, putting that in slope intercept form, feel free. I'm okay with you stopping right there, okay? But if you did that, you would get y equals 4x minus 4 as the equation. And look at our graph. Doesn't it seem like it's going to hit the y-axis at negative 4? We already found our slope is up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. Okay, so there you go. I'm sorry? Um, think about algebraically, 4x minus 8, and then if you add 4 to the other side, it's just simplification from there. Now let's do a slope of a secant line and let's notice the difference. So this is the last piece we're going to do uh, for, for, for today. Um, so if you look, our function is x squared. If I plug 1 into the function, I get 1. If I plug 2 into the function, I get 4. So those are the two points that we're speaking of. Just like any finding equation of a line, we are going to connect those two and find the slope of our secant, which is 4 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. So our slope of our secant is 3. And now again, the, the, the formula that's going to really help you over and over again is our point-slope formula. stick those points in, so it's y minus 2 equals 3 times x minus 4. It can be any of those points, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm sorry, I just flipped those around. The, yeah. Sorry about that, that's 4, your y value and that's your x value. So we get y minus 4 equals 3x minus 6, and if we add 4 to both sides, we get y equals 3x minus 2. Now look back up in our equation. If we connect the 1, 1 point with the 2, 4 point, our slope is a little decreased compared to what it was. So it's not 4, it's down to 3. And we have hit uh, negative 2 instead of negative 3. Okay? So we're going to stop here. We're going to continue these notes tomorrow. And we'll do the rest of our examples then.